it? It's good to be here. I know we're down a little bit in numbers this morning. That's okay. Got several that are deer hunting. And, uh, traveling, that's okay. Let's pray God keep them safe when they're out there in the woods. And Sister, I hope they all get a big one. I hope they all get a nice buck. So uh, I know whatever the God leads their way, that they have a good time. Nothing wrong with that. But I want them to be safe. If you've got a prayer request this morning, a need of the hour, just want you to raise your hand toward heaven this morning. It might be family, uh, financial, spiritual, emotional, whatever it is, lost loved ones, something hanging in the balance this morning that you need Jesus to intervene in this morning. Whatever it is, the struggle in life, whatever it might be this morning, just want you to raise your hand toward heaven there for a few minutes this morning and uh, just wave it toward heaven this morning. Whatever it is this morning, whatever's going on this morning, let Jesus see that hand up there today. I'm going to ask you to take your neighbor there by the hand, somebody there close to you this morning as we pray and begin to seek God just for a few minutes and pray for Pray for yourself. Pray for that one there next to you. Whatever's going on, whatever might be going on, you don't have to know. Maybe you do know. If you do, that's fine. If you don't, lift their name up to heaven. Call their name out this morning. Let's just seek God for just a few minutes this morning. I'll ask Brother Everett if we're going to lead us out. I'll pray together. Blessed Jesus, Masters, we come to your throne this morning, Lord. We thank you for your presence, for your spirit, O oh God, for your grace, your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, because you first loved us, Lord. We were in an unlovable condition, oh God. We thank you this morning, Lord, that you've changed us. Uh, Lord, that you've healed us. You've set the captive free, Lord. We thank you for healing that's in your wings this morning, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to let your healing virtue flow across this congregation this morning, Lord. For every sickness and disease, Lord, we rebuke it this morning in the name of Jesus, Lord. We speak in the authority of Christ, Lord, for healing to flow. Uh, Lord, we rebuke, Lord, sickness. Lord, disease, whatever it may be, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to let your healing flow. We pray, Lord, this morning for emotional stress, Lord, this morning. As we get ready to gear into the holidays, Lord, we rebuke, Lord, stress and pain. Um, Lord, let us enjoy this time of the year, Lord. Uh, Lord, we rebuke high blood pressure this morning, Lord. We rebuke, Lord, the tricks of the enemy this day, Lord. Um, Lord, we pray for lost loved ones to be saved this morning. We pray, Lord, a special prayer this morning, Lord, that you would save our lost loved ones, Lord. We call them home, Lord. We call them saved and set free, Lord. Save our grandchildren, Lord, our children, our moms and dads, whatever the case may be this morning, Lord. Save their souls before it's too late, oh God. And Lord, we ask your blessings now on Heartland Harvest Church. You bless our church family, Lord. Lord, you'd be with these that are away this morning, Lord. They're deer hunting, Lord. They're traveling, whatever it is, Lord. Lord, we pray a hedge of protection around them this morning, Lord. Keep them safe, oh God. Lord, bless our teenagers this morning, Lord. Watch over them, we pray, oh God, today. And Lord, we ask you to bless this great nation, oh God, the United States of America. Lord, we ask you to bless our veterans, Lord, that have paid the high price, Lord, of sacrifice, Lord, as we honor them today, oh God. We thank you for this nation, Lord, that we have the freedom to come to church. We have the freedom, Lord, to exercise our faith in you, Lord, to preach, to sing, to teach, Lord, whatever, Lord, the church, uh, Lord, is made up of this morning, Lord. We have that freedom here in America today, Lord, because of the price that was paid for our founding fathers, Lord, those that have laid their lives down in battle, oh God. Bless this day, we pray, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Mark, if he will, wants to come help us take up our offer this morning before we go on and change the order of the service. Ask him to take the offer plate up there and we want you to give this morning as the Lord directs. We ask Brother Luke, if you want to come us out too, get one on each side there right quick. I want you to give this morning as uh, the Lord directs and these lays upon your heart is through your faithful support and through your giving this morning that we can do what we do and we're able to minister to the community and do things and all this stuff. So we want you to give this morning as the Lord directs. I'm asking you to bow your head again right quick if you will. Blessed Jesus, Lord, as we come to you again, Lord, in the spirit of praise and worship, Lord, we praise you, Lord, for an offer this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this part of the worship service that we can worship and give to you freely this morning, Lord. Lord, you only ask for 10%, Lord. It could be 20 or 50 or 80%, but you only ask for 10. Let us be faithful over that 10%, oh God. Lord, we ask you to bless, Lord, this morning to multiply, we pray, to meet the needs of Portland Harvest Church, that we can minister, Lord, to the community, Lord. Bless, Lord, we pray, where this money is set aside to go for. We ask these blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen.
feels different this morning. I'm going to ask the Brother Everett to come up front, Brother Howard, and they'll come down here this morning and uh, stand. I don't know if, I, if there's anybody else here that served our country. National Guard, anything if not, I know these two have, and I just want them to come up here this morning. And, uh, and I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate what they've done for our country and what they've done to serve us. Give them a hand clap this morning. I appreciate them. Brother Everett served in the Army and Brother Howard served in the Marines. And I appreciate them this morning, what they've done, the sacrifice they may have, have uh, uh, had to suffer while they were in service. I don't know the uh, length of time or the battles they faced. That's none of my business. And, but the thing about it is I know they gave just to let him Uncle Sam call. They went. They went. I know Brother David uh, Gates not here this morning. He don't come to church anymore, but he served faithfully in uh, Vietnam. He was there Friday night, and uh, he and uh, he sacrificed. There's different ones that, that have paved the way that we could be here this morning, Sister Janie. That we could be here this morning. I know we get excited about the church flag, and we get excited about seeing the church flag wave. But you know what? If the United States of America's flag didn't wave, the church flag would have never waved. Hey, Amen. It would have never waved. So I thank God for our veterans. And, uh, I want us all to stand right quick, if we will. And we'll just give a moment of silence right quick to those that have, that have served. And God has already called them home. And they did lay down the precious price. Some of them went and served never got to come home. Never got to come home and enjoy what they fought for. So I just want us to bow our heads in a moment of silence this morning, if we will. going to show just a quick video this morning. If you were there uh, Friday night, you saw this video. And if you didn't, we're going to be new to you. We're going to show just take a couple of minutes here. was a lawyer once. His name was Francis Scott Key. He penned a song that I'm sure you're aware of. You've seen it. It's in most hymnals throughout our churches. It's called the National Anthem. It is our song as an American. We go, however, to a ball game. We stand in our church services and we sing the words of that song and they float over our minds and our lips and we don't even realize what we're singing. Most of us have memorized it as a child, but we've never really thought about what it means. Let me tell Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in vicious conflict with the mother country, Britain. Because of this conflict and the protractedness of it, they had accumulated prisoners on both sides. The American colonies had prisoners and the British had prisoners. And the American government initiated a move. They went to the British and they said, let us negotiate for the release of these prisoners. They said, we want to send a man out to discuss this with you. They were holding the American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards offshore. And they said, we want to send a man by the name of Francis Scott Key. He will come out and negotiate to see if we can make a mutual exchange. On the appointed day in a rowboat, he went out to this boat and he negotiated with the British officials. And they reached a conclusion that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Francis Scott Key, jubilant with the fact that he'd been successful, went down below in the boats, and what he found was a cargo hold full of humanity, men. And he said, men, I've got news for you tonight, you're free. He said, tonight I have negotiated successfully your return to the colonies. He said, you'll be taken out of this boat, out of this filth, out of your chains. As he went back up on board to arrange for their passage to the shore, the admiral came and he said, we have a slight problem. He said, we will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it'll be merely academic after tonight. It won't matter. And Francis Scott Key said, what do you mean? He said, well, Mr. Key, he said, tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag that you think so much of, 
or you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry? He said, we're going to remove it from the face of the earth. He said, how are you going to do that? He said, if you will, scan the horizon of the sea. And as he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament is being called upon to demolish that fort. It will be here within striking distance in a matter of about two and a half hours. He said, the war is over. These men would be free anyway. He said, you can't shell that fort. He said, that's, that's a large fort. He said, it's full of women and children. He says, it's predominantly not a military fort. He said, don't worry about it. They said, we've left them a way out. He said, what's that? He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? He said, we have told them that if they will lower that flag, the shelling will stop immediately. And we'll know that they've surrendered, and you'll now be under British rule. Francis Scott Key went down below and told the men what was about to happen. And they said, how many ships? He said, hundreds. The ships got closer. Francis Scott Key went back up on top and he said, men, I'll shout down to you what's going on as we watch. As twilight began to fall and as the haze hung over the ocean as it does at sunset, suddenly the British war fleet unleashed. <clears throat> he says, the sound was deafening. There were so many guns that there were no reliefs. He said it was absolutely impossible to talk or hear. He said suddenly the sky, although dark, was suddenly lit. And he says from down below, all he could hear the men, the prisoners, saying was, tell us where the flag is. What have they done with the flag? Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us. One hour, two hours, three hours into the shelling, Every time the bomb would explode and it would be close to the flag, they could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that bomb. And Francis Scott Key would report down to the men below, it's still up. It's not down. The Admiral came and he said, your people are insane. He said, what's the matter with them? He said, don't they understand this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said, he remembered what George Washington had said. He said, the thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is he will die on his feet before he'll live on his knees. The Admiral said, we have now instructed all of the guns to focus on the rampart to take that flag down. He said, we don't understand something. Our reconnaissance tells us that that flag has been hit directly again and again and again, and yet it's still flying. We don't understand that. But he said, now we're about to bring every gun for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott Key said the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear was the men down below praying. A prayer. God, keep that flag flying where we last saw it. Sunrise came. He said there was a heavy mist hanging over the land, but the rampart was tall enough. There stood the flag, completely nondescript, in shreds. The flag pulled itself was at a crazy angle. The flag was still at the top. Francis Scott Key went aboard and immediately went into Fort Henry to see what had happened. And what he found had happened was that that flagpole and that flag had suffered repetitious direct hits. And when hit had fallen, but men, fathers, knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground. Although knowing that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and held it up, 
humanly until they died. Their bodies were removed and others took their place. Francis Scott Key said what held that flagpole in place at that unusual angle were patriots' bodies. He penned the song, Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Or the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that the flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet fly and wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. The debt was demanded. The price, it was paid. blessed people, a very blessed nation, despite all the trouble in America, it's still the greatest nation that God has ever blessed to put his hand of approval on. A lot of difficulties and a lot of strife and a lot of different things, and we can look on the bad all day long, but at the end of the day, I'd rather live here, Sister Kim, than any place else in the world. I'd rather live here than any other country in the world. I'd rather live here in this government than any other country in the world. I'd rather get up in the morning and know that my feet hits the sand or the red, white, and blue, whatever, than any other place else. 
because I know that God has his hand on this nation. He will continue to have his hand on this nation as long as there's people, Brother Howard, that will pray and seek his face and desire a relationship with him. Uh, yeah, it may get tough and things may change and the, and the government's going to continue to come after the body of Christ and understand all these things. But Sister Carolyn, as long as there's somebody praying and somebody seeking God and somebody that loves him, they'll still be Christians somewhere. Amen. I thank God for our veterans of the faith. If you have your Bible this morning, we're going to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 20, and we're going to look at different different uh, scriptures here this morning, just for a little while, but Deuteronomy chapter 20. As you turn there, I do want to say again that uh, this nation has been blessed by God and freedom, and I say this all the time, Moral Day and Veterans Day, you know, uh, freedom's never come free. It's never came free. If you're here this morning and you're free, somebody paid the price for it. Veterans paid the price for this country to be free. Also on the spiritual realm, your salvation comes free to you, but it cost Jesus something. It cost him his natural life when he walked on planet Earth. He died and followed the footsteps of the, of the Father that had placed his life and directed and orchestrated his footsteps. And then when he got ready to lay his life down, Sister Glenn, he done it for the cause of his father because he wanted to reconcile mankind, humanity, back to his daddy. So he went to the cross, beat up in the natural, hurt in the natural, distraught in the natural. But the spiritual realm, he knew it was the way to go. And what he paid the price for, you and I can have freely this morning. Salvation don't cost us nothing. Guess what? Healing don't cost us nothing. Amen. Deliverance doesn't cost us nothing. All these things we need in the spiritual realm, restoration, reconciliation, and the list goes on. All these things we need this morning cost us nothing. But it costs Jesus everything in the natural. So again, we can we can look at both of them and say, you know, freedom doesn't come free. It doesn't come free to our country. Somebody paid the price. It also cost Jesus his life in the natural. It cost him something. It cost the founders of the of, of Christianity in the early days, the pioneers of the faith, something. They paved the way, Brother Chuck, that you and I could be here this morning. They they, they uh, rooted and grounded and set the foundation that we could be here this morning the, in the spiritual realm. They, they uh, if you will, walked the hard road years ago that we might have the easy road. They done all those things that, that, that we could be here today, and they, and they paved the way for us. I just wonder sometimes what they would think from the graveside, Brother Guy. I wonder sometimes what our veterans would think they gave their life for this country if they're pleased or they'd be discouraged no saying is roll over in the grave. And I wonder also sometimes in the spiritual realm, Christians, Sister Glenna, pioneers and veterans that paved the way for Christianity, looking from the graveside, if they'd be pleased with where the body of Christ is at, or they'd be discouraged and upset and think this is what I died for this is what I gave my life for we have a fight before us we have a fight to continue to move forward and we don't like the word fight we don't like the word war but you know what Jesus told us in the last days and we're not going to turn there but be what wars and rumors of wars till he comes back always going to be a fight somewhere always going to be a battle somewhere always be a, a, a conflict somewhere regardless of where we live at or what's going on, something's going to rise. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 12 through 10 says this. Thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it. And it shall be, if it make the answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. And if it be... And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. Even early on in the book of Deuteronomy, we find here conflict. We find here a, a, a conflict between two different sets of people. The definition of a veteran is this. Someone having extensive experience in some field or someone who has served in their nation's military. This is the we can think. Uh, uh, or safely assume that anyone who served in the military has an extensive experience in some type of field of what they do. And most probably, it's in the field of manual labor. 
fighting, fighting for the cause of Christ, fighting for all they do. But sadly, this is where our country, I believe, is it, it, it's, it's gone off kilter. Many churches this weekend do not honor Veterans Day. They don't honor our veterans, our Veterans Day. They don't honor those that have served in the military or been around someone who's been, who's been in the military. They don't understand the, the deep emotion. They don't understand the scars, Brother Howard, and the sacrifice that our veterans have paid. And yet we find our, 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 our country going so far out of kilter, if you will, in certain areas that, that they don't recognize and, and, and take heed to what this nation has went through to be where it's at. I thank God for our veterans and what they've been through. But also, this end of the spectrum is the same thing. There's a lot of people who don't understand the sacrifice of Christians that have paid the price that we could be here today. It's lukewarm anymore. No, oh, okay. It's lukewarm anymore, Christianity. Take it or leave it. If I feel like going, I'll go. If I don't feel like going, I won't. If I feel like giving, I will. If I feel like getting involved, I will. If not, it's okay. Jesus said this about being lukewarm in the book of Revelation, that God would do what? He'd spew you out of his mouth. It's like lukewarm water. He wants us to be on fire for him, or he'd be better, are we better off not to serve him at all? Listen to me. War is from the enemy himself, the deceiver, Satan. It is meant for no other reason but to satisfy a fleshly desire of men or mankind to overtake another country or another person or people, if you will, for the, for the prospect of being the greatest. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some reasons to fight. I'm not saying that. America fought because she wanted freedom of one thing and one thing only. When they came to America, was what? Religion. And yet we find in our country today, religion is the number one thing that's under attack. It's the number one thing that the enemy's after is to stop our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech. And yet it's the very thing that uh, America was founded on, the freedom of religion to exercise our right to worship and to praise and seek God in any form or fashion that we desire. Thank God we can show up this morning. I, it, it disturbs me sometimes, Brother Howard, when I hear people say, I got to go to church this morning. Whoa, boy, boy, boy. Mm -mm -mm. It makes me think that something's not right. I have to go. I got to go. No, you get to go to church. It's a privilege to be here this morning. It's a privilege to be able to get up and live in a society and a country that says you have the right to worship God. You have the right to go to church, whether it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday afternoon, whenever the doors are open and a convenient time for you to go when you're off work or have the free. What a great privilege to be here this morning. What a greater privilege it is to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ preached. Hello, somebody. And not because I'm up here, but because it's the freedom America has this morning because somebody paid the price in the natural and somebody paid the price in the spiritual that you and I might be here this morning and we can choose to be here and we can choose to raise our hands up we can choose to sing and shout and dance and run for the cause of Christ what a great privilege and an honor it is and yet sister Janie most people take it for granted most people take it for granted. Church will always be there. I'll always have my freedom. I'll always get to go to, and it'll all the door. No. The enemy is after us this morning. We don't like to talk about war. We don't like to talk about all these things, but guess what? War is on us. In the spiritual realm, we're in a war. This to this after the Civil War. I know time's getting away from us. Stay here just a few minutes with me. After the Civil War, General Sherman gave this commitment's address in Michigan, in this speech, he said this, war is hell. Have you heard that? But later in a newspaper interview, he repeated that, but then he added this. Thank God, soldiers are from heaven. Mm. War is hell, but thank God, soldiers are from heaven. Even though we do not like it, even though we don't like to celebrate war, Especially if, if you live in a country that is lost and, and your country is taken over, whatever the case be, we don't like to uh, celebrate, talk about it or anyway, but God ordains this principle in us that we are in a spiritual war from now till he comes back. 
whether you like that or not, whether you want to accept that or not, we're in a war. We're in a spiritual war for our families. Your children are in a battle, whether you want to realize that or not this morning. I know time's getting away from me. I ain't going to be able to get into all this. But your children are in a war, and they might not even know they're under, uh, under siege or attack. Your grandchildren are under attack this morning, whether you want to realize that or not. Schools are nothing but cesspools anymore. Hello, somebody. Schools are distraught, tore up, and all these different things are being taught. And let me tell you something. We send them off every day. I say we. I don't want to throw everybody under the bus. But they're sent off every day by Christian families that do not pray over them before they send them out. Sent off to school, sent off to junior high, high school, grade school, I don't care what it is or what kind of school it is. And yet we send them out the doors for the most part and never pray over them, call their name out to Jesus to put a hedge of protection around them or keep them safe throughout that day. And we turn them loose. And you know what? For the Chuck, the enemy has a big bullseye on their back to destroy them, to manipulate them, to twist and pervert. His, his work and what he's trying to do in this country against them and try to manipulate what we train them up to be. And when they and when they go off in these places, guess what happens? If we're not careful, the enemy will seize them and take them up. We're in a battle, whether we want to believe it or not, for our families, for our, fam for our, our marriages, our homes, our finances. Everything's a battle. Whether you want to accept that or not this morning, you're in a battle. You're in a battle for your health this morning. You're in a battle this morning to stay healthy and prosper and to, and to be a faithful soldier for the Lord. Our veterans in the natural have left home and gone to terrible places to be surrounded by terrible people. And yet they were willing to do so. They spend their time, a lot of times, no doubt, while they were overseas or wherever the case may have, wherever the Uncle Sam may have took them, no doubt they spent their time remembering their loved ones back home. No doubt they've suffered loneliness and homesickness. But yet they were dedicated to a nation that they believed so much in, Sister Wanda, they were willing to lay their life down. And I forgot about Brother J.D. a while ago when I was talk talking about veterans, but JD's, Brother J.D. served also. But they were willing to go for the Howard but this here, this nation, their families, their homes, their loved ones, they suffered loneliness, homesickness, all different things they may have faced, but they, dedicate, well, they were dedicated to their nation. And some were called upon to give the ultimate sacrifice, their very lives, for the sake of others. What kind of people do this? John 15 and 13 says this. John 15 and 13. I don't know if I give that one Sister Mindy or not. John 15 and 13 says this. Greater love, what? <laughs> Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. <laughs> Jesus is the best friend we've ever had. He's the best friend you'll ever have. And guess what he done? He laid his life down, Sister Gerald, for you and I. He laid his life down because he loved us so much that he was willing to go and walk the road down his father had laid before him. He calls us friends. Not only we're friends, we're his brothers and sisters in the spirit realm. He loved us so much he was willing to die for us. And the natural veterans are willing to die for their friends, for the cause of this great country. Listen, I believe that describes veterans in the natural. I believe it describes veterans in the spirit. That people have laid their lives down, martyrs for the cause of Christ. The Sunday school lesson this morning was on, on uh, the first martyr and, and, and people that were martyred for the cause of Christ and for the cause of the gospel. There's still people out there today in the Middle East, the third world countries, brother guy, that still lay their lives down martyred and sacrificed because they go in the name of Jesus 
in the countries and territories that hate the, hate the name of Jesus, hate the cause of Christ. But Brother Chuck, guess what? They love Jesus so much. And they love the thought of salvation into every soul so much. They go into these hostile environments, these hostile countries that hate them for the cause of Christ. For the cause of Christ. Our veterans have given so much. Some come home with their bodies tore up, loss of limbs, mental disturbances, you know, that the that, that things have bothered them mentally, that they're, that they're possibly not right anymore, that they have to take medication, different things, and, and, and yet they go. Yet they went because they love the country. In the spiritual realm, martyrs for Christ laid their lives down in prison, beat, away from home and family because of one thing and one thing only. Sister Juan, they love Jesus so much they want to lay their life down to see the gospel of Jesus Christ expanded to places that it might not be without them. I'm going to uh, let me share this, this story right here. And then uh, we'll dismiss it on time. I'm getting away from this after 12 o'clock. Story goes back in World War II, in the middle of the middle of the winter, very cold winter. American POWs were being transported. It was in Japan, or, or I'm sorry, Germany, and uh, prisoner of war camp. They were moving them through the mountains, and on these trains, and on these trains, they wasn't boxed in by the guy. They were just flatbed trains, so you know, wind hitting them, whipping them cold, uh, freezing to death, and yet. That's how they're transporting them through the mountains. And uh, as they transported them and began to move one way, there was two train tracks. And on the other set of train tracks, whatever, another train was coming this way. Same scenario, open open uh, train, uh, flatbed carts are pulling them on. And as this train stopped with American POWs, on the other side was Japanese POWs. For some reason, whatever it was, they both stopped at the same place because of the situation they didn't see Japanese or Americans they saw hurt and wounded men that were hurt in battle and the ones that could get up went and swapped over the flatbeds and began to hug on each other comfort each other and the main the most amazing thing for them they prayed one for another so maybe the Japanese didn't they might not understand but the Americans prayed for them and begin to just begin to isn't it amazing how humanity can change when Jesus is in the middle of what we do isn't it amazing the two sets of people that hate one another because some man tells them to hate each other but when Jesus gets in the middle of whatever the views of what goes on change because Jesus brings love and peace they stood they were there on these these flatbed trailers praying and and, and praying for each other, and when the trains had to take off again, and the Americans had to get back on their, their train and, and take off, guess what? The Japanese soldiers didn't want to let go. They would hang on. Just a few weeks earlier, well, they were however time, how long they were at prison war, shooting at one another. And now they couldn't let go of each other. Listen to me. In America, there's a lot of them. I'm getting ready to close. In America, there's a whole lot of differences. We can look at the skin color and say there's a difference. We can look at, 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 at uh, the political parties and say there's a difference. We can look at uh, the social economics of where we're at and say rich and poor. The list can go on and on and on and on. We can make divisions everywhere. But the one common denominator that can bring us all together is Jesus Christ himself. He can reach past the color barrier he can, re he can reach past the political barrier. He can reach past by the higher, the economic barrier. He can look past all these things that separate us and bring unity and not division. Nobody else can do that but him. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. I still got a couple of the pages of notes here, but for the sake of time, we'll stop right there this morning. And I will say this, and this might be... Todd 2 and 13, but you know what?
I got the microphone right now. <laughs> so I'm going to use my authority for just a minute. But all these people that don't like this country and said they were going to leave after this election, if you don't like this country, leave. Now, that's not political. I don't mean it like that because this is still the best nation there is, Republican, Democrat, and the White House. But if you hate it that much that you don't like whoever gets in there and you're going to exercise, you want to leave, we waste a whole lot of money on a whole lot of other things. I think we could waste the money on an airplane ticket or bus ticket and get them out of here. This is still America. It's still one nation under God. It's still, we are still his people. We are still here to be fruitful and multiply. It's still the greatest nation God has ever blessed. And it's still a nation that needs to heal. And more than heal, we're a nation that needs to see salvation now more than ever, Sister Linda. Souls hang in the balance. Souls hang in the balance. And guess what? This morning, if you've been in church for a while and the blood of Jesus is applied to your heart, guess what? You are a veteran and a, and a soldier for Jesus Christ himself. Whether you like that position or not, you are. And you're called to get on the battlefield. I should have had that song sung this morning on the battlefield from all over. But you're on the battlefield this morning whether you like it or not. And the old part of that song says, We'll serve him till we die. We'll serve him till we die. Because one of these days it's going to pay off. One of these days it's going to pay off because we're going to step on the other side. And it'll be worth it all. We're veterans this morning. Pave the way for your children. You're a veteran this morning. Pave the way for your grandchildren. You're a veteran this morning. Pave the way for your neighbors. Pave the way for those around you that can't find their way. They can't find their way to Zion. Can't find their way to church. Can't find hope or peace or whatever. Sister Lynn, we're to pave the way and be a soldier steadfast and true and to make it plain and simple for them to find their way to Zion, find their way to church, find their way to Jesus. You're a soldier this morning. You're a veteran. You're a veteran. I'm going to ask you to take your neighbor there by the hand, if you will, somebody close to you. Thank you, Jesus. Someone going to ask you to pray today as we uh, dismiss the prayer. I want you to pray, and I'm going to ask you to Three different ways this morning. I want you to pray first and foremost with that one holding hands there beside you. And after you pray, I want you to pray for our nation. You don't, I'm not telling you to pray all day long, but just say a prayer for this nation. But then I want you to say a prayer for the body of Christ and Heart and Harvest Church that we'll do what God has called us to do, that we'll be soldiers on the battlefield. You know, we always want to go around the world and save the world, but you know what? We don't have to go around the world, Sister Carol, to save a soul. There are souls right here around this church. There are souls at Blodge at Sykeston. East Prairie, uh, Charleston, wherever, wherever you're associated, there's souls right there around somewhere, somewhere that need Jesus Christ. So let's, let's pray right quick. Well, I ask Sister Glenn if she will lead us out in prayer and I'll pray together. Blessed Jesus, Lord, we thank you this day, Lord, for all your blessings, Lord, and all that you do, Lord. We pray first and foremost this morning for our church family, Lord. And Lord, you would bless these that are holding hands this morning, Lord, in the sign of unity, Lord, that we're fighting together this morning, Lord. There's no big eyes or little use this morning on the battlefield but lord we all serve the same general lord that's jesus christ lord we ask you to bless these that are here this morning whatever they're facing and going through lord we ask you to bless lord and we thank you lord today for this great nation america lord lord we ask you to bless america the united states of america we pray for revival we pray that you would bless from the north the south the east and the west this morning oh god lord we ask you lord to send lord workers soldiers in the harvest field lord send lord we pray evangelists and preachers lord Lord, teachers, Lord, whatever the case may be, Lord, back into battle, Lord. Let us get off the sidelines, Lord, and engage in battle once again, Lord. Uh, Lord, for there's a day coming soon, Lord, when the war is going to be over, Lord. You're going to call us home, Lord. We pray that you'd begin to move right here at Heartland Harvest Church, Lord, that we'd find our place, Lord, uh, in the battlefield, Lord, in the community that's lost and dying around us, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray, Lord, today for all the outreaches for Heartland Harvest. We pray, Lord, for our food pantry, Lord, Lord, that we can help some families and 
friends, Lord, that, have, that are hurt and wounded from battle, Lord, that you'd raise them up, Lord. You'd help us, Lord, to get engaged, Lord, in battle, Lord. We pray for souls to be saved in this neighborhood, Lord. We call souls saved from the north, the south, the east, and the west this morning, Lord. Save our children, Lord. Save our grandchildren, oh God. And Lord, let Heartland Harvest be a light and a beacon to a lost and dying community, Lord. Lord, let the gospel of Jesus Christ be, de be declared and claimed this morning, Lord, by your people and your children here, Lord. Lord, we raise up a standard in these last days and hours. We raise up a standard against the enemy, Lord. We raise up a standard, Lord, for the whole world to see, Lord, for the Saxon community to see, Lord. Jesus is alive and well. And, Lord, let us represent our great commander and our general, Lord, with all that we have, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless us, O oh God, for all the things you call us to do, Lord. Let us be faithful and true, Lord, to the cause. And one of these days, Lord, we understand you'll call us home and it'll be worth it all. Bless us this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Come back tonight expecting God to bless. Any announcements right quick? <laughs>